Welcome to the Picademia course on the basics of semiconductors. This lecture covers the PIN diode. Let's start. By the time you finish this lesson, you will learn the PIN diode structure, types of PIN diodes, PIN diode breakdown voltage, PIN diode forward voltage, temperature effect on the PIN diode forward behavior, PIN diode storage charge, and the PIN diode turn on transient behavior. In this course, I have so far spent lots of time on discussing different mechanisms taking place in a PN junction diode, and I covered pretty much every important concept related to PN junctions. In higher voltage and power applications, the PN junction reverse saturation current and breakdown voltages become limitations. As a result, a modified version of the PN junction diode, which is called the PIN diode, can be used. A PIN diode consists of a P plus region, N minus region, and an N plus region. In other words, the N minus region is sandwiched between the two highly doped P and N semiconductors. Since the sandwiched region N minus is so lightly doped, it can be considered intrinsic. This is why this region is sometimes called the intrinsic region. And this diode is called PIN. Often this diode is pronounced PIN diode. And uh, for its simplicity hereafter, I call this a uh, diode PIN diode. The N minus region is normally referred to as the base. The width of the base is shown by W sub B. First, let's see what will happen when these three semiconductors meet each other for the first time. As I explained earlier in this course, doped semiconductors can be considered as pressurized containers filled with gas. The pressure of each container somehow is relevant to the concentration of the dopants. N plus region is a highly doped semiconductor and contains lots of free electrons. Since the density of free electrons in the N plus region is much larger than that in the N minus region, the N plus region free electrons near the N minus N plus junction diffuse into the N minus region. The newcomers to the N minus region, I mean the electrons, recombine with the holes in the N minus. On the other side, P plus region is a highly doped region with acceptors. And in comparison with the N minus region, it can be considered as a vacuum that sucks in free electrons. Therefore, in the P plus N minus junction, free electrons from the N minus region diffuse into the P plus region. This diffusion from the N plus to N minus and N minus to P plus continues and continues. And once the N minus region is almost empty of mobile charge carriers, the diffusion process slows down and the device enters the equilibrium state. What is now left behind is an ionized N minus region. Therefore, there is an electric field all the way from the N minus semiconductor to the P plus semiconductor. Depending on the concentration of dopants of these three regions, N minus can be completely ionized or partially, and this affects the internal electric field profile from the N plus to P plus regions. If the electric field profile looks like a triangle, the pin diode is called the non punch through diode or NPT diode. If the electric field profile looks like a, a trapezoid, the diode is called punch through diode or PT diode. And if the electric field profile is rectangular, the pin diode is called punch through limit diode or PT limit diode. To see what is the difference between the NPT, PT, and PT limit diodes, we need to take a look at the breakdown voltage plotted against the base with W sub P. First of all, what is clear in this diagram is that the breakdown voltage increases if the base width increases. Second of all, it is evident that for a given base width, an NPT diode can tolerate a higher reverse voltage than PT and PT limit diodes. All right. So far, we know that the base width 
affect the breakdown voltage, but what about the dopant concentration of the base region? Does the dopant concentration of the N minus region or base play any role? Here you can see the breakdown voltage uh, plotted against the dopant concentration of the base region. Unlike the base with a breakdown voltage diagram, the relationship between the breakdown voltage and ND is not linear. However, what is clear is that increased dopant concentration of the base region reduces the diode breakdown voltage. At first, the reduction rate is very slow, and after some point, it becomes much faster as ND increases. The relationship between the breakdown voltage concentration of charge carriers of the base region and the base width is expressed by this formula. By using this formula, you can replot the two plots I just drew here. Let's now take a look at the forward bias behavior of the pin diode. Under the forward bias, we can consider three voltage drops across the diode, two junction built-in voltages, and the voltage drop across the base, uh, which is called the drift voltage. So the diode forward voltage can be formulated like this. The total junction built-in voltage, which is a result of the summation of the built-in voltages of the junctions P plus N minus, and n minus n plus is given by this equation. In this equation, P sub L is the whole concentration near the P plus n minus junction, and n sub R is the electron density at the n plus side of the base. The drift voltage, which is the voltage drop across the base region, is given by this equation. The drift voltage is proportional to the base width W sub B and is proportional to the sum of the mobility of uh, holes and electrons in the base region. And also, this proportional to the stored charge Q sub F. Another aspect to look at is the temperature dependency of the forward characteristics of the pin diode. Basically, what we want to uh, see uh, is that what happens to the pin diode forward voltage when the temperature rises or drops. This kind of temperature dependency to a large degree depends on the manufacturing technology used to build a pin diode. For example, if the platinum diffuse technology is used to build a pin diode, increased temperature causes the forward voltage to decrease no matter how much is the forward current. However, if the radiation-induced recombination centers technology is used for low currents, increased temperature causes the forward voltage to drop. However, above a certain forward current level, increased temperature makes the forward voltage of the pin diode uh, larger than that when the temperature is lower. Earlier, you saw the drift voltage equation of the pin diode. This equation is a function of the forward current, base width, mobility of the charge carriers, and the storage chart. What we can do here is to manipulate this equation a little bit so that we can compute the storage charge. If I plot the storage charge versus the forward voltage, we can see a curve like this. What this diagram demonstrates is the reduction of the storage charge as the forward voltage increases. We already know that the drift voltage is proportional to the forward current. As a result, for a higher forward current and therefore forward voltage, the pin diode storage charge reduces. Of course, this is a very good news since uh, this causes a less reverse recovery. The transition from the off to on states in pin diodes is different from normal PN junction diodes. As a result, I take the rest of this lecture to discuss a little bit about this transient behavior. At the transition of the pin diode into the conducting state, the voltage first increases to a voltage level called the forward recovery maximum voltage, VFRM. 
and then it drops down to the forward voltage VF. If T1 is the time at which the voltage drop over the pin diode is 10% of the forward voltage, and T2 is the time at which the voltage over the diode reaches 110% of the forward voltage, the difference between T2 and T1 is called the turn on time and is shown by TFR. Why understanding this behavior is important? Well, this is important because in some applications where we need to use the diode to clamp the voltage, let's say the voltage over a MOSFET as a way of protection, this VFRM can cause severe voltage applied over the MOSFET, and this may cause a permanent damage to the device. In a poorly designed 1700 volt diode, the forward recovery maximum voltage can even reach to 200 or even 300 volts, and this is 200 times larger than the forward voltage. Therefore, we are always interested in a power diode or pin diode that has a very small forward recovery maximum voltage or the one that does not have it. Under a certain condition, we can use this equation to calculate VFRM. As we all can see, VFRM is proportional to the base width and the forward current and is disproportional to the dopant concentration in the N minus region. In this lecture, I discussed the pin diode structure, breakdown voltage, forward voltage, temperature effect on the pin diode forward behavior, storage charge, and the pin diode turn on transient behavior. In the next lecture, I will introduce the Schottky junction. Thanks for joining this lecture of Picademia.